Hey guys, here with a quick tip for diagnosing active wheel speed sensors. Um, a lot of late model stuff has gone to this. And I wanted to show you a trick. Um, not something I made, but something I've seen other people use here on YouTube. Um, for displaying the signals in a way that's a little easier to understand and interpret. Um, I had a 2012-ish Jeep Cherokee come in. Um, customer concern was a ABS light and a traction control light, basically anything that had to do with wheel speed uh, was illuminated on the dash. And there were two codes. The first was C003A-2F, which is a right rear wheel speed signal erratic. And then C0039-02, signal failure from the right rear wheel tone ring. Um, so we have two codes, both for the right rear. However, they're pointing to opposite issues, uh, one with the sensor, one with the ring. So I did my standard, you know, test drive, graph wheel speed sensor signals. Um, looked pretty normal, honestly. Um, if you've seen cars with active wheel speed sensors that have damaged or damaged tone rings, you'll normally see a, short, a sort of sharpness or choppiness in the signal, um, and as opposed to smooth transitions as you're losing data. Uh, you're losing resolution because of the damage to the tone wheel. Um, so what I decided to do was hook up the Pico and confirm what all was damaged, if it was gonna be a tone ring or a sensor issue. And this is what I found. Um, our left rear wheel is gonna be the blue channel, channel A, and the right rear is going to be red. Um, that's our problem child. So if we zoom in here, this is already pretty heavily filtered at 600 hertz. Um, we have this sort of just background signal noise. Uh, this was key on engine off and it looks like it's zero to 20 millivolts. Take that back. Now, each one of these wheels, I went ahead and I spun once, approximately one revolution. Um, I went a little faster on this one, hoping to catch a little more data. Um, but this blue channel should represent a good pattern here. And I don't know about you guys, um, but I don't find a lot of diagnostic value in this. Um, this is kind of difficult for me to use. If we go back to the area where it was off, you know, we have these humps at 21 millivolts. If we go to where it was being spun, we still have the humps at 21 millivolts. However, what I would imagine are our actual trigger events are gonna be these spikes here. Well, those will represent tone, tone wheel output. Now, what this noise in the background is with key on engine off, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but being that it was present on both my good wheel, as well as, switch here, as well as my bad wheel, um, I wasn't super worried about that. Um, so I went ahead and I took these two captures and I was really struggling with you know, how, how am I going to make heads or tails of this and find where my fault really is? Um, so what I decided to do was use a math channel. So I set this up as the frequency of channel A in black and the frequency of channel B in pink. So let's go ahead and turn on our two channels. So here is the time that we spun the wheel. On our good wheel. Okay. Obviously, I would say this black trace is much easier to identify um, performance on than sort of this. Um, so now I'll go to the next screen where we spun our problem child wheel and we are greeted with this. Let's just move our red trace up a bit. Um, so instead of having, as we had on our previous slide, a nice even spin and then slow down, 
we have sort of this choppy erratic pattern. Um, and this sort of matches my experience of the, the choppy or the irregular graft data. Um, now when I was driving the vehicle, you know, as much as 30, 35 mile an hour, um, there were no dropouts. Um, I was using a, a Snap-on Solus Ultra, um, excuse me, Solus Legend, and I think the refresh rate is a bit faster on ABS uh, using my Autel 906. The, the Autel would not have found this. The, this is in one revolution worth of data. Um, this is not the sort of signal um, that you're going to find on scan tool data. Uh, I went ahead, I was somewhat unfamiliar with the codes, just looking for uh, descriptions of when they set so I could duplicate the customer's issue. And really the code set criteria basically had you look for opens and shorts, which obviously we didn't have, um, being, you know, both, both wheel speed sensors are outputting, as we can see by our math channels. Um, and then to go ahead and drive the vehicle and look for a signal dropout to zero on the scan tool. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but if this data right here represents one or two revolutions, you're going 35 mile an hour, the refresh rate of the scan tool is not gonna, is not gonna catch that. Um, you're gonna set fault codes, uh, as this vehicle did, but the scan tool is not gonna catch that. So, I uh, just wanted to pass that along this is how you use the math channel. Um, you will take, oops, excuse me here. You will take a uh, a formula. You know these are the names for them, um, but you will take a formula, and it actually has a wizard that helps you create some of these channels. Uh, there's a lot of different um, videos online. I believe CTI has, has a really nice hour-long so video um, about math channels and understanding what to use them for and ways they can help you. Um, you know, it seems kind of silly, you know, a wheel speed sensor concern. Um, but man, if, if, if you're confronted with, with this data right here, I mean which is easier to interpret. I know which one was easier to make the call for me. Uh, as soon as I saw this, this pink trace, it was about as cut and dry as, as you can imagine. I mean, here we have a little drop. You know, would you have seen that? Zoomed in 26 times. You know, would you think, hey, maybe that's just noise, maybe that's some aliasing since we're on two seconds per division? I don't know. Um, we got another one here. Uh, like I said, I can tell you this pink trace is certainly easier to, uh, to look at for me. So, I hope you guys get a chance to try that. Uh, happy fixing.